There's no getting around the fact that buying a home is expensive, especially here in Oregon. So if you're thinking about buying your first home, you need to have a plan and that plan starts with savings. So in this video, I'm going to share five things that you need to know about saving for your first home. It's no secret that Oregon has one of the worst levels of housing affordability across the country. In my county, Yamhill County, uh, the, it's only about 25% of renters who can actually afford to buy the first home. And that number is not gonna get any better and it's worse in other parts of the state. So this is a really important thing to consider because housing affordability over time continues to get worse and worse. We're very underbuilt, which means there's not enough homes for the number of people that want homes and it's getting tougher and tougher for people to get into the first home. So if you feel like I have a sense of urgency, it's because I do. I know so many people personally who have waited to buy a home and now can't. They may never be able to buy a home, which to me is really sad and I don't want that to happen to you. So if you're thinking of buying a home, you need to start right now with a savings plan and that's what I'm gonna show you in this video. So the first thing I want you to know has to do with a myth regarding the down payment. Conventional wisdom has always said that you need 20% down for your first house. Now, that's a good idea if you've got $100,000 sitting around because for a $500,000 home, which many homes cost, while it's a good idea and while you wouldn't have to pay private mortgage insurance, while you get a slightly better interest rate for having a 20% down payment, it's just not feasible. So it's a myth that you need that. I know if you're a Dave Ramsey follower, I'm sorry, but you don't need 20% down. So the second thing that you need to know is what you do need to have as a down payment. Now, there are some programs out there that you can find where it's a 0% down or they basically have like a secondary loan, which may be an option for some people if you have really good income, but for some reason haven't had a lot saved, that might be the right thing. But really, you should focus on saving between 3 and 5% down for a down payment. So the third thing you need to know is closing costs. Closing costs are the things like paying your lender fees, paying your prepaid taxes, paying for the title to do their work. There's several different things that are enclosed in that. And usually it costs anywhere between 10, $12,000. I tell people to typically expect about 2% of their total purchase price on closing costs. If you have a 5% down payment and another 2% for closing costs, you need to have about 7% of your total purchase price saved. I have included in a buyer guide that I put together what this looks like. It is, it's an example for a $600,000 home and you can see what you really need to have saved for this kind of home. What's typically not included in closing costs and the only thing you'll have to pay out of pocket is your inspection fees. And the other thing is the appraisal. Now the appraisal cost, which I'll also cover in another video and is covered in the guide, that can either be paid out of pocket or as a part of closing costs, depending on how your lender structures it. But those two things are the, about $1,500 to $1,800 for both of those put together. The fourth thing I want you to know is something that most people don't know about, and it's kind of tricky to use, but if you can make it work, it can make sense. And this is a first time home buyer savings account. So this is something that in Oregon, you can save up to $10,000 and put it in a tax-free account. So for some people, this will make sense. For some people, it may not make sense. It's something you need to talk with your tax advisor about, but just know that it's a real option that you can have this first time home buyer savings account. So look into that. And we've also got some information about that in our buyer guide. So the fifth thing I want you to know is that you should really heavily consider working with a financial planner and a financial planner who understands the value of real estate. So a financial planner can help you have your money instead of just being in your bank account where it's not really doing anything, they can either put it in a CD or some interest bearing account where it's actually going to increase and grow for you so that by the time you're actually buying, a home, it's going to be more effective than if you just had that money sitting in your bank. They can also work with you to help you save properly. They can look at your finances and make sure that your money is being spent and saved in a way that is the best for your financial situation. If you don't have a financial planner and you're in Yamhill County where I am or in other parts of Oregon, it might work too, but I've got a great financial planner I'd be happy to connect you with. So those are the five things that you really need to know about saving up for your first home. If you enjoyed this video, you can subscribe. Obviously, you know how to do that. Or if you liked the video, click the like button or leave a comment letting me know what you liked about it. I'm gonna have several more videos coming out about this. In addition, if you want more concise versions of these videos, I have this free buyer guide that I am pretty excited about. We've had it for a while, but I'm just now starting to really tell people about it because um, people continually say, wow, this is actually really valuable. You should tell people about it. So that's what I'm doing. You can find that in the link in the description below. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you enjoy the next ones and I'll catch you in the next video.